Hi, I'm Vince from View Beyond. I'd love to welcome you to this series of interviews with fellow coaches where we talk about what they do, how they do it, why they do it, and the difference they make. I hope you enjoy it. Um, to start from the outside in, uh, it's, it's okay. how my brain works, which is not about me and I, but about you and we out there. So let me take you to the end of a coaching assignment, right? So let's go to the end of it. Typically, just think, uh, you know, think of a specific client or just general clients. What have they walked away with? So when they, when they, they finish working with you, because any good co coach finishes working with people, right? Mm -hmm. What have they walked away with? What, how are they changed by what they've been through with you? Thus far, what I have found, and by going back, um, because I need to go back and see that this is working, right? Mm -hmm. So working with them, the one thing that I have found that women are not doing is moving themselves off that back burner, and especially as entrepreneurs. Women entrepreneurs and working moms, we're so busy serving everybody else except ourselves. So working with me and going through the system, what has happened is they've now created time and it's time for themselves. Mm. And in that time, they're working on things specifically for themselves, not tasking for everybody else in the world, yes. which they don't do. Who yeah. stops and takes the time to say, you know what, I really want to get clear on what I want in this vision or, you know, whatever it may be. Yes. So... You know, I'm finding that um, we're not all equal. We're just not. So in the world, we're striving for that, right? Everybody wants equality or whatever that case may be. But what we are, what we do stand on equally is time, yes. right? So when you put the time in for yourself, that's when things begin to change. So when I look back, you know, it is a goal setting system that I'm teaching them. Mm -hmm. so will they achieve their goal if they show up for it? Yeah, absolutely. But first and foremost, it's creating and practicing, setting time for themselves, yes. and paying attention and taking care of themselves. And that in itself creates the inner balance that they're missing in their lives. Yes. You know, yeah. I can't change the chaos that's going on outside of your life. I'm not going to promise that I can do that because that's not yeah. going to happen with me. But what I can do is help calm down that chaos inside of yourself, help you create that inner balance, and yeah. then have you see that time is what we all have the same of. So we're equal there. Yes. But it's how you use it. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I, I'm. I'm. I'm nodding. There's a couple of things that 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 just struck me. The first was, we're not all equal, mm -hmm. and particularly in this world where women take and are given uh, so much of the the mental overload and work of other people, particularly yeah. men, um, and society and children and and that the whole kind of baggage that's there. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering to what extent you, your, your clients, as you, as you work with them on this, um, I hear you kind of carving their space for themselves, right? Carving their, their time and space for them, them to be there. How much are you undoing inequality that they put on their own shoulders? So where, where they're actually forcing themselves to not have time. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is pretty much while we're going through each step, we're looking at what the roadblocks are. And a lot of those roadblocks are in their mindset, yes. you know, and, and it's in the stories that they're telling themselves and, and it's their perspective because it is perspective and stories that kind of keep us hung up. Yes. So as we're piecing through this step by step, you know, we're integrating each step into their life one at a time, but also undoing some of those stories, yes. you know, and some of those truths, because it's not always a truth. We know that, right? So <laughs> yeah. we don't have to believe everything we think. That's right, yes. <laughs> you know? So it's really examining, wow, you know, is this really true for me? And a lot of times, no, it's not. Let's get a better truth. You know, so we're working that piece in there as we're going through each step. Yes. I like to make sure that I'm not creating another thing to do because that's the last thing that we need as women you know we're just not looking for more busy work we yes. want a quick answer we want it done and i just want to get out of this pain or aggravation or whatever their state is 
you know, so really helping them to see that um, switching these things around as they step through the process, mm -hmm. um, in the end, they will have again practice shifting those mindset and those stories that kind of keep them hung up. Yeah. And what's, what's the thing that, they, that you typically find or, or uh, I, it's like the biggest roadblock or the, the, there's, there's often a core roadblock. Uh, so with weight loss, for example, I do a lot of work with people in, in weight control. Um, and the core roadblock is the belief that you have to eat right mm -hmm. so you i have to eat regularly right that's a that's a core roadblock and and you know once you can move people from that quote unquote certain ground mm -hmm. everything else opens up because then then all the other conversations lead from that so mm -hmm. i was wondering with the, with the the women you're working with where they are in chaos and and it's all going in all different directions and the majority of women I know feel like they have to keep control of every single thread that's going right. And, and they can't let one go. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if there's anything core that you, 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 as a coach, as you experience this, you see more and more, I've got to go after that because they're going to have that. Mm -hmm. And I need to take that piece of the puzzle off the table so that then they can work the rest of it. So I was wondering if there's anything core that comes through. Yeah. Core definitely would be, like you said, the control. Um, perfection is a piece. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to do it perfectly. And then another piece that shows up is that I can do it all or I must do it all. Yes. I have to be able to do it all. Yeah. And there's no thought of themselves in that. So they're fourth or fifth on that priority list of yeah. doing it all. So really shifting those priorities and examining those priorities and letting them see that you know, and a lot of times we hear people say, or we read somewhere that you've got to put that oxygen mask on yourself first to save yourself. The reality is a lot of times we don't even know where the hell that mask is, yeah. even though it's hanging right here. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. where's the mask? Yeah. Out. You know, so it's really helping them to see that, you know, making themselves as a priority is needed, Yes. but yeah. they don't have to do everything perfectly. And it's okay, you know, and really kind of pulling into the present moment and just knowing that you're okay right here, right now, yes, you know, yeah. and not getting too far ahead and not looking way too far behind at what you screwed up. You're going right. to screw up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what goes yeah. with this, you know, so getting okay with all of that, you know, yeah. you know, it's so funny. And this is a, a little bit of a tangent. But I was watching an uh, interview. My, my brother-in-law does these uh, records in my life videos on YouTube. A series and it's really cool he basically talks to musicians about records that influence them and his interview yesterday was with gary newman from tube way army way back in the the 80s but but yeah. gary newman his career f f nosedived in the early 90s and he actually managed to turn it around over the course of about eight years but he made a, a point that what he did was he stopped thinking about any expectations about his music he stopped thinking about anything to do with commercial success or whether people would like it or whether it was like what he'd done before. And he just said, what I started doing was making the music I wanted to make in that moment mm -hmm. and then let, it, let people have it, you know, and, and awesome. they either liked it or they didn't. And it, it, it is, I mean, it's the Zen approach to life. The somatic approach to life is you are where you are and you are who you are at that time. So I'm, I'm really interested to what extent that be perfect driver or the do it all um, driver, how much is that a script from, from personal script, as in life script from, from parents or from family background, the role of women in the family, et cetera, that's been handed down um, and learned behavior from seeing mothers do it all the way through their life, right? And how much is society and um, sales pitches and, and marketing and uh, kind of the, the marketing to shame that goes on, as in nobody's ever perfect because we have to sell you something to, to, to stop you being unperfect. There you go. Um, so I was wondering what sort of balance you see. How much is it that you're working with people on, on personal story versus societal story? Mm -hmm. There's a ton of, like you said, that modeling that we have. And I do think that there is that societal pressure but there's also that competition piece, right? So, um, and especially if you're looking at that stay-at-home mom or even that working mom, any, any mom for that matter, right? There's yeah. that competition piece of what Susie's kid is doing and why isn't my kid doing it and trying to keep up with that, you know? Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head uh, with expectation and then stories going on for that. 
So yeah. what I can do is provide you with a better view, a better yeah. option yeah. to go a little bit easier on yourself, you know, because um, that competitive mama thing, I've been there, I've done it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have three kids. Yes. And, and especially once they get into school and all the craziness that goes on with that, you know, it is a pressurized place. So at some point you've got to just step back out of it and kind of say, all right, where am I in all of this and assess how you want to be, you know? Yes. So for me, really working with people on how they want to feel now, instead of waiting till the end of that goal, you know, deciding now how you want to feel. Do I want to feel like a competitive, crazy mama? No. <laughs> Yes, Do I want yes. to teach my kid that? No. So don't bring that energy to yeah. with it and becoming conscious of what you're doing because we're on autopilot all the time going from thing to thing. Yes. You know, so slowing the pace down a little bit for yourself, observing, then you're kind of able to step out of what society's telling you. Is that my truth or their truth? You know, what is going on with the clicks or school yes. or the other moms? Yeah. You know, um, so really slowing those pieces down for themselves it yeah. would you know is definitely helpful yes yeah i i've done some work with um female entrepreneurs coming through and starting their own businesses having left corporate life i was in corporate life for a long wow. time and um you know you know quote unquote and it's one of my oh, it's one of my least favorite things in the world following their bliss as it were you know that that kind of oh, it's all bliss it's not it's hard work you know that, that <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's exactly that's right <laughs> um and it's hard work of the self and of the business uh, world um and I, you know, I do a lot of this with people and I, I think I, I, I should have shares in, in 3M and post-it notes because I get people to write stuff down all the time. Yeah. And in that, in that zone you were just saying about carrying it all and kind of perfection in all parts, I, I have with a number of clients, I know they've got boards in their kitchen, which is the important side and the not important side. And every time they reach this kind of I've got to do, before they do anything, they have to write it down and put it, is it important or is it not important? And then we reflect on that after, after a period of time, right? So, yeah. so I'm really um, interested in this, this idea of competition. And let me just extemporize for about two seconds to make it make sense, because otherwise it's my head. <laughs> when my hands start doing this, you know my head's doing five times as much. But I understand you, which is... Which yes, is okay. yeah, that's good. Well, so, as long as that, that it's like we connect somewhere on it, right? The... Um, I was in HR, right? So this is, this is my background. And HR, in, certainly in my organization, was largely female um, dominated. Mm -hmm. Whereas leadership was largely male dominated, right? So, so I used to joke that our HR reps were almost like the wives to the husbands who were the leaders, right? And so they were making up for stuff. And if the leader was letting himself down, the mum would make it better or the wife would make it better, right? So it, was, yeah. it wasn't always that case. And that, 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 I don't want to paint it with a general brush that says it's always that. Yeah. But I, I could see it. And it was like my own mental model of things as a man in that, that environment. So not working with female leaders, but working with male leaders. Um, something hit me about c competition was that, that, that males are expected to, to compete. Um, because sports, because war, because all that stuff that's historically there. Plus, the people who get to the top, quote unquote, in our society are males, largely white males. And so I knew any number of leaders who didn't want that, who, who, who cared for their families, but couldn't be with their families because to be with your families was, was lack of success. So it's really interesting to me when you say about women being competitive, because I see it and my wife will talk about it and, you know, we'd see it in the parent teachers association, the, the, the positioning at school and even in the carpool lane, when you drop your kids off, right? It's kind of the amount of <laughs> people are crazy. Some of the, some of the strangest, weirdest, most dangerous driving happens right outside middle school in the morning when I, when I, when I do <laughs> take my kids to school every now and then. So I'm, I'm interested in competition there's self-competition, but what I, what I was hearing was a little bit of um, what gets termed a competitive frame of reference, which is when you get no feedback about yourself, mm -hmm. when you're isolated in any shape or form, the only way you can f feed your ego in any way is to compare yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. So, so I ha am I better than Jenny? Am I, you know, am I doing worse than Julie? You know, it's that kind of thing. It's the only way you can get feedback. And in a feedback starved environment is worse than than negative feedback right so so being isolated is bad for humanity yeah. which is why social media blows my mind a lot of the time 
the um so i was i was interested how much you use gaining feedback for your clients from people that they know so that they break that loop of i'm just here mm -hmm. what's happening mm -hmm. typically when i am working with in this program it's done in a group and what i'm finding is that nine out of ten times these women are learning more from each other than anything i'm going to bring to this mm -hmm. party <laughs> which is yeah. fantastic and right. I, I kind of come in backwards on the coaching end of things where i started with groups and that was just fire for me yeah. and it, again it was just having other people say hey me too you know me too and you would look at this woman and be like you how could this be yeah. you're so successful you know and yeah. and it's our perception of this other person and not understanding that they're struggling with exactly the same thing and it's about themselves yeah. you know or collectively we're sitting here so you know do i ask a one-on-one -on -one client go ask everybody else what the perception of you is no i don't you know for me it's about cleaning up your your inner house yes and you know getting clear on that but the isolation i can completely understand yeah. um i've owned my own business for 21 years so i've moved wow, from well done. yeah that's and cool it's really been great because for me my first priority was to be able to be home with my kids yeah. you know so i shape shifted and did whatever i needed to do to be home with them but it was very isolating so for me it was you know like you said uh, what am i am i doing the right thing so i can't yes. understand looking outwardly but i did learn that i needed to compete with me and just be better than where i was yeah. you know and i had to adopt that or else i was just getting caught up swimming in someone else's lane and i was just going doing crazy things because i'm over here paying attention to what somebody else is doing and i'm pulling in all their energy and that's not even what I wanted. Yeah. You know, so getting really, you know, being clear on what I needed and wanted was important in kind of not getting caught up in all those negative stories. We all have those. Yes. You know? Yeah. I love that. I've, I've written it down. I put a big box around it, swimming in someone else's lane that I didn't <laughs> even want to be in the pool. It's kind of. Yeah, no, I've been there and done that too. I'm like, <laughs> why am I in your lane and you're in my way, even though yeah. I'm in your lane. <laughs> It's, you know, it's always struck me. So, so uh, like I say, I'm a musician and writer. I do, I do a lot. So I'm a bit of an odd brain. But um, it struck me, you know, with two girls. My girls are 15 and, and 12. So in, in high school, midway through high school and, and in middle school. And they're, they're pursuing life, you know, in their, their studies. And they're not getting channeled too much in any direction. But I always... I had a very open education, so it was basically whatever I wanted to do, and my, my parents were incredibly supportive, so I, and I've got a brain that just loves to do a lot of things, so it's kind of, it was cool, That's I could great. play. I mean, play is important to me, I just play. Um, but it, especially in the US, more so than in the UK, I think, although the UK is changing, the education system feels like it becomes the conveyor belt to work. So, you know, and, and classically, you know, you think of all these kids, I want to be uh, uh, NFL player, I want to be uh, a pirate, I want to be a cowboy, I want to be a singer, I want to be a musician, I want to be, very few people start saying, I want to be a scientist, or I want to be a, a manager, or I want to be an executive leader, right? Right. So somehow that conveyor belt begins to stream them out. And so I get this visceral sense from people, because I work with a lot of musicians who are doing music as a side gig to, to life. Mm -hmm. And all of these individuals are, are trapped in this mask that I don't think they ever asked for. I always say managers become managers by accident. They, they come be, become managers in corporations by being really good at doing their job. And then the corporation wants them to do more of their job. So they give them an extra pair of hands to help. And suddenly that person's a manager and it's nothing to do with them wanting to be a manager or being particularly good at being a manager. They're just managing. Yeah, they're and babysitting then, is what they're yeah, doing. That's right, right. And then they've got two, and then they've got three, and suddenly they can't climb down because they've got a position attained to it. And who would dare to step down from a position of authority where you're winning, quote unquote? Right. So I'm really interested. Let's let's flip it over because we're about 25 minutes. We've got we've got time yet. So so I'm yeah. but I'm just it's the interviewer in me just watching that clock over there. Success stories. Now you just you just gave a beautiful success story of yourself, right? Mm-hmm. 
80% of businesses fail in the first 18 months. That's the, the, the statistic that hasn't changed from the middle of the 20th century all the way through to now. And it's still 80% of businesses fail in 18 months, largely because of lack of planning, lack of, um, you, you know, starting a restaurant because you like to cook is not the reason to start a restaurant, right? So it's there. Mm -hmm. but, but you said a, a success story. So yours is massive success. Like 21 years is massive success. Like, well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, I'm interested, the clients you've helped shape this, this space and time for themselves, success stories. What have you seen them go on to do? What's, what, what are your favorite kind of examples of kind of, yeah, she did that? Mm -hmm. I think my favorite to date because I was just, and it's so funny because I was just working and it just happened that I was missing my own creativity. Oh, no. And I was saying, ah, I, I'm missing my creativity, but I'm busy, right? Yes. I, and I own two businesses at this time. So it's a busy time for me. But I ended up in with a group of four artists. How does that even happen, right? So here we are, four artists. So this woman, ended up at the end of, when she walked in in week one you could see physically the stress mm. the anxiety the not knowing like she was scattered as artists and i'm sure you can relate to this we are idea generators yes. right we, we want to do everything but where do we even start and i'm yeah. over here and i'm over here so she is just scattered everywhere by the end of week five there was such conviction in her voice of what she's doing we've got this map and all these ideas that she had we found a way to weave them into one central idea oh so nice that yeah. in and of itself to see where she is so artistic and creative for her to bring all these ideas that are popping and put it into one vehicle if you will yes. and start to use that so that was her first success. But I think the biggest success overall is having people for, again, I'm spending five weeks with them, seeing them understand what drives their behavior. Yeah. What's creating those blocks and then how to shift those patterns. That for me and for them is just mind blowing. Like this is what I thought. And now I think this, <laughs> you yes. know, so just yes. to see that shift in change for themselves and what they're thinking and how they're looking at the picture. So it's basically just walking up and just shifting that picture a little bit. And yes. they walked up and shifted it, not me. Yeah. And they're just like, that looks right now. I yeah. love it. Yeah. You know, so those successes for me are the greatest ones because that's longevity. That's sustainable. Yes. You know, when yes. they can begin to catch their own stories, become aware that those stories are even there because they're the ones putting those roadblocks in front of themselves. Yes. You yes. Know, so now that they have a toolkit to break down those stories, perfect. My job is done. Yes. So massive success there. You know, um, can, can I say, you know, someone lost 20 pounds while working with me in five weeks? No. You know, could they do it? Yes. But, you know, I, do I have that person that has set that kind of goal? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's the honest answer. Yeah. But can I repeatedly go back or see these people years later and say, oh, my gosh, that pattern shift that you taught me, I still use it to this day. Yeah. And for me, having those tools that are applicable to any situation in their life, whether it's this singular goal or whether it's goals for the rest of their lives. I feel that that's most important. So there's massive success there. Does that make sense? Oh, it certainly does. It certainly yeah. does. It's, uh, you know, this, this is a Tony Robbins thing. He always describes change as uh, ecological. When, when the change becomes ecological, it becomes part of your fiber of, of who you are. Yeah. And, it's, and it's, not, it's not changing from there on. You know, it's kind of, I, I get it. It's, um, let me just read, I, I wrote about five things very okay. quickly and I'm not sure I can even read. I'm going to have to put my glasses on actually to see if I can read it. Let's have a look. There we go. I don't like my glasses, they shine on the screen, so it's kind of, yeah. and plus they're, they're very focused. I have to do that a lot, which. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm interested, if you, if you said that, that um, took all of everything we've just talked about and boiled it down to describe the person, what are they feeling, what are they experiencing in their life right this moment that says, I can help. Right. So, so the pain that they're in right now. So, so just describe it in a nutshell for me. 
So the pain that somebody's in, how can I help them? Yeah, why they would reach out to you. So, so it's kind of, mm -hmm. if, if you're the lifeline that's getting thrown off the boat, right? They see mm -hmm. that lifeline and say, that's what I need. What, mm -hmm. what, what, what are they feeling? They're feeling scattered. They're feeling mm -hmm. scattered and not successful anywhere because they're not spending enough time in any one place or maybe there's one place where they feel successful, but it's furthest away from the core of what they want. Yeah. So I feel super successful at work, but I'm not spending time with my husband. My marriage is, is in the gutter. You know, my kids, I run by my family. You know, yes. that's the common pattern. So what they're doing is feeling angry and resentful that they're trapped in this role and that's not what they want. They're feeling anxious, upset. Their body is now starting to talk to them and communicate. So they're having aches and pains. They're not feeding themselves well. Yeah. So they're really that beat down, um, that just that negative, I'm, I'm in this hamster wheel and I can't get out of it. So a trapped, boxed in feeling. Yes, yes. Uh, exhaustion, physical exhaustion, mental exhaustion, and emotional exhaustion. So it's almost like this give up feeling. Yes. Um, and there's no way to even remember the girl or the woman that they once were. Yes. So they're yes. really missing her and they're, they've stepped away from that. So kind of really operating on a lot of masculine energy. Yes. Not really touching in that feminine side. And I'm not meaning they don't dress pretty because they're very yes. typically feminine looking women, but their feminine selves of just being in flow or relaxed or feeling joy or wonder for themselves, yes. it's not there. So, so isn't that interesting? So hang on a second, let me just write this down because if I, if I write it, I'll get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I could just oh. keep talking about her. I understand her because I was she. Mm -hmm. I have felt all of this. Yes. And I understand it all the way to my core. And I think for me, I get so excited about talking about it quite simply because I know that there is an answer. It doesn't yes. have to be that way. And the answer, you already have it. Yes. I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already know either. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've, you've read it, you've sought it out, you've sat up at two o'clock in the morning Googling this stuff. But yes. It's yeah. a matter of just putting the pieces where they, you know, where they can fit together. Yes. Yes. Yep. You know, the answer for me on how to find inner balance is different than what it's going to be for you or for anybody else for that matter. So I think that's the great part, you know? Yes. yes I get it completely. What, what I wrote down was it's almost the journey they've been on. If you think of it as a journey is the demands, whether self demands or other demands, it's just demands, right? It's, as they've stretched beyond limits, the behavior has become limited. Yeah. Like when you said it's kind of, they, they've almost contracted. It, it does feel like it's getting smaller to the yeah. small number of ways that they can just cope, right? Just, yeah. I can just deal with it if I stay here. But anything, that, anything that's beyond that limited window mm -hmm. is too scary to contemplate, even though you know it can be the fix, right? So it's kind of... And that's the thing too is... A lot of times when we dive into our lives and our businesses, we come in with a certain set of tools and those tools worked for us before we've gotten to this level. Yes. Right. So if we're not replenishing that toolkit, because sometimes we've lost some tools or we just didn't even have them to begin with, yes. you know, if we're not adding to that toolkit for ourselves, then how the hell are we supposed to be giving it to everybody else as that's our role? Right. Yes, and yes. sometimes and we want that role. We're happy to have that role, but it's understanding that having and being comfortable with the tools that are in your toolkit, instead of fumbling around for it, it's something that you're practicing. So when you're super anxious and it's midnight and you can't sleep because your body is pinging, your head won't shut off, what tool are you reaching for? You know, are you drinking? Are you eating? Yeah. Or are you you know, doing something, meditating more, doing something more healthy, journaling or letting it out and understanding the energy yes. of your body, you know, so really getting in, in creating a toolkit for yourself it is just so super important. I, I yes. just, I could go on about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's resonating. Um, 
uh, from a personal level, but from there was a piece. I want to say it did the rounds on Facebook about four months ago, five months ago. And it was a, a mother in her, I want to say she was in her early 30s, maybe mid 30s. And she stopped drinking. For some reason, she stopped drinking. And she went to a party and she suddenly began to see how much drinking was going on yeah. uh, amongst her peer set and her friends. And it tied in with something that I'd seen in my own family and, and, and otherwise, um, which was this idea of alcohol being a, an anesthetic, basically. It's like, so, so for me, in, the, in the, the window of what we've been discussing, if this is the limits, if this is where I play and I don't play outside of this, then this is what I null with alcohol or yeah. with mindless television or with food or with, you know, yeah. basically here's where I can be anything else I can't consider. So I've got to damp it down, whether it's my creativity, artists do this all the time. Yeah. Like, and totally. the, the idea of commercial constraints on art, I can't follow that idea cause I can't sell it. Mm -hmm. like, you've got to follow that idea. That's where the muse is, right? It's over there. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's great. So what you're doing for them then, there's a few little things that have come out that, that I think are, are just real, real gems here. The first was the swimming in, in someone else's lake. I just love that, 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 that thing I'm swimming. <laughs> and I, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. like, like but the, there's something about the hamster wheel. You, you mentioned it in, as we were talking about the, the lady about the hamster wheel. And it's almost a binary choice for anyone who's considering working with Carol, right? It's the binary choice you're offering them is you can stay on the wheel and keep running and the wheel's only gonna get faster and tighter and you're gonna have to run faster, right? But all I offer is the chance to stop the wheel, see the wheel, decide if I'm getting back on it or if I'm, if I'm gonna design a different wheel or a different set of yes. wheels or, or whatever, right? So that, that, it's almost that binary choice that you wanna lead people towards is kind of, yeah. here's a safe place to do this, a safe place with women who know what it's like. Um, the, 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 I don't wanna say the me too from the, the big societal thing that's happening at right, the moment. Yeah. That, 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 the me too of, um, we're all here. Every, yeah. every human being is here actually because of organizational life and corporate life and, and um, capitalism forces us here. We, we don't get to be our natural selves because there's aspire and sales attached to that. Sure. So to get theoretical there and philosophical. <laughs> the, um, but I understand. Yeah, right. So, so I think I'm interested. I'm always interested by this because we are running up on time here. And I just want to ask you one question. And it, you may, it may be nothing, right? It may be nothing. Whenever I'm interviewed, whenever people speak to me, I always find I've said something that I didn't expect to say, that <laughs> took me by surprise, that I didn't know I was thinking, but was absolutely what I needed to hear. So I'm just interested, has anything struck you in this, this conversation where it's kind of, oh, I just said that. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Was there uh, anything that was there? I think the, the reminder of the toolkit and the visual of that, because... I guess while I'm going through the process, I'm not really paying attention to the fact that what you are learning is how to grab hold of those tools because it's a layering process. Yes. So it was a great reminder for me to have this conversation of how important that toolkit is, A, to have it. You know, as we were talking about, um, and I forget how it even got brought up with um, reaching for either alcohol or food in coping and having everything kind of, you become limited in yes. how to cope. You know, I love how you said that because it did remind me of there are so many more tools, but you can go buy a tool, have it in your toolkit and never use it. And then when it comes time to use it, you're like, what the hell did I even buy this for? Or why do I even have this? Yes. You know, as opposed to I use this and I know exactly the tool that I need. There's the relief that I needed. And now I can move on in a more peaceful way. Yes. So I'm so glad that we did have this cool. conversation because, you know, to answer people, you know, what are you going to do for me? You know, what, are, what am I going to do for you? It's like, how do you succinctly say that? But I think it's super important to understand to have that, those tools available for mm -hmm. yourself that you've created that work for you. Not because Carol said, this is how you fix it. I, I, for me, I don't learn that way. I'm yes. not going to do it just because you told me to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, say no. Yeah. Step four. You know, so, you know, it, it's that exploration oh. and the taking the time and 
the way you said get off the hamster wheel and kind of observe it, um, know that you're there because we're not, none of us are avoiding the hamster wheel. That's yeah, life. We're all on right? it, right? We're, we're on right. It. But how long you want to keep running? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and how, how beat up do you want to be? So yes. yeah. you know, it's again, putting those choices back in your life. And um, when there's choices, things feel a little bit better. You can yeah. be more proactive instead of reacting you know, which is typically how we're all behaving. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's so interesting. I, not to go too far down a metaphor, but I love it because this is how my brain works. Me too. <laughs> hamster wheel, right? right. So the hamster wheel is you're always going to be on one because that's the nature of being human, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's the nature of humans to aspire and to struggle. That's, that's what we do. And so we'll create struggle even if struggle doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking one of the things people reach for, which we hadn't mentioned, because I'd mentioned physical things of the, the drinking and drugs and food and all that stuff, um, and abusive relationships. That's the other place people go looking to, to, to null, nullify things. Because if, if they're bad to me, then I, can't, I don't have to change, right? So if, if they're bad. Interesting. But the, the interesting thing about the, um, the hamster wheel was I was thinking of one of the things that people fall for and it's an age old human thing. This is the grand escape. If I could only live in Bali on a beach, none of this would be hard anymore. It's like, well, <laughs> yes, but there would be Komodo dragons that could attack you. <laughs> there's other stuff that happens. Your dragon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's like there's, there's bad stuff happens there as well. Right. So, yeah. so, but I was just thinking that that, that almost, if you could, yeah, I'm not telling you how to market. Um, Cause I said, I wouldn't do that. And I haven't done any review of any materials. The, um, but it almost seems like that becomes part of the, 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 the reach out is if you're on a hamster wheel, no, you're going to be on that wheel forever, but you can be on a better hamster wheel or a kinder hamster wheel and you can be in control of it. Right. That, that's be kind to yourself. is kind of a, yeah. I think most people would get that. I think, um, yeah. we're, we're up against time. Anything else, anything we've not covered that, that, that you wanted to share? Um, no, I, you know what? I think this was perfect and right. it really, allowed um allowed for the space for me to kind of observe the mechanisms of how it's working too because again i'm i'm on my hamster wheel too and i'm not thinking about oh, these yeah. pieces you know on a daily basis so it's really great to have the conversation and and pull things apart from another person's perspective instead of i'm in my own little box you yes, know what I mean? yeah so, yeah great